Welcome back to part 5 of the mobile automation series utilizing Cucumber and Calabash. We're finally going to start building our framework and we're going to be using the Calabash Android gem. So we're going to be looking up how to set it up, uh, generate the skeleton structure, what it means to re-sign an application and how to do that, how to run it and how to start a console so that you can query for elements. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our project in Eclipse. So, with Eclipse open, we can go ahead and create a new project. And we can call this Calabash Cucumber Testing. Alright. What we're going to want to do as well is move over our gem file stuff into this project. So inside of our thing we just have our project file and our uh, gem files. Now while we're in this location that we just created we can cmd. So the first thing we want to do is run the Calabash Android setup. So we're going to use bundle execute and that's going to target our specific Android gem and we're going to hit enter when we type in setup. Alright so it's going to ask for a key store location. The easiest way to find this is actually just in Eclipse. You can go to window preferences, drop down the Android, click the build and you can just copy this location right here. Going back in, paste that in, hit enter, and now it's going to ask you for the password, and the password is Android, all lowercase. And then it's going to ask for an alias, and this is Android Debug Key. Alright, so now that we have the Calabash uh, debug key store set up. We can go ahead and run bundle execute calabash android resign. Now what does resign do? Resign is only needed if you weren't the one that built the application. So resigning it is allowing the application or the APK to point to your specific um, debug key store so then later when you actually try to start a test server the key the debug key stores match which will allow you to use the debugging tools such as querying and touching over ADB so we don't actually have an APK in our um, project so I went ahead and created one so I grabbed the Google I.O. APK, I built that in Android Studio, and I'm assuming you're going to be using whatever app you want to test. So at this point, our projects might differ a little bit, but the principle is the same. So I'm just going to drag in my APK into this uh, file. And now I can just resign my APK. And when that is done, you can go ahead and use the run command. So bundle execute calabash android run and the APK name. Now this is going to run whatever device you have open. So how do we get a device open? Well in this part I'll show you how to do it with a simulator or an emulator but in a future video we will go over how to run a physical device because those are a lot faster and a lot more reliable but to start out we will be using an emulator so go ahead and open Eclipse and we're going to use the tools we added in the virtual device manager we can go over to device definitions and you can pick whichever device you want I'm going to do the Nexus 5 and you just hit clone device hit OK, clone device, and it will come up to the top where you can hit create AVD. You can go ahead and name it. 
and Nexus 5. You can go ahead and give it an API level, which is just um, what operating system you want. So I'm going to pick the API level 23, which is 6.0. And then I'm going to pick the 64-bit CPU. And I'm going to go with no skin because it's the most, uh, it looks the most similar to the actual device. And then I'm going to reduce my RAM. If you have enough, feel free to leave it at what you want. And then I'm going to use the host GPU because I have one on my machine. If you don't, that's okay. It can still launch. It just might be slower, and you might need to use the Haxam Accelerator plugin. All right, and then you just hit start. I'm going to scale this to real size so you guys can see it. So you can see the device pops up and the first time launching it usually takes a little bit longer but it will load. Now that our emulator has launched we can go back into our command prompt and execute the run command on the APK. This is going to create a test server but as you can see that it could not find a file directory called features and that's because we need to create that and at this point if you are using a repository you would not be needing to do that but if you are creating one from scratch you are going to need to do that so we can use the calabash android gen command and this will generate a skeleton structure for us Alright, and if we look in our files, now we have one called test servers and we have one called features where it has your feature file and your step definitions and your support files for launching and cleanup. Alright, now we can go back and try to run the command. As you can see, we've got a bunch of errors. These are actually just warnings, um, and I'll show you how to remove that while it is installing the app on the emulator. So to remove these warnings, all you have to do is go into your Ruby file, go into the lib folder, go into Ruby, go into gems, 2.1, gems again, and now we're going to look for the gherkins file. We're going to go into the lib folder. We're going to go into gherkins again. And right here where it says C Lexer, we're going to just edit this. And we're just going to comment out the prefix stuff by putting in two single quotes. And then we can save that. And that's all we need to do to fix that issue. Alright, and as you can see, um, my Google I.O. app has launched. And right now it is trying to run these scenarios that have been listed in the first feature file. These will fail because we haven't programmed them yet. Alright, and as you can see, the test did fail because it was waiting for the text marked login. So this was expected, this test wasn't supposed to run, but now we can see that we were able to run and our app was launched. Just to verify that our change to comment out all these warnings worked, we're just going to run this again. And there you go. As you can see, that's gone. Your only warning left is about that. And you can actually just follow this link and fix it yourself. I would strongly recommend to do it because then up here, 
where it says when I pressed and this failed, this would be a red line, and if it would have passed, it would have been a green. It makes reading your uh, terminal a lot easier. Okay, so we're just going to close this out. And we're going to reopen it. And we're just going to do the same thing as before by opening a command prompt in our location or skeleton structure. And the last thing I want to show you today is the how to open a console in the Calabash Android. Alright, so what this did was open up the IRB interactive Ruby shell. And this lets you write in Ruby code. But the most important thing is you can use a command called start test server in background. When you do this, it actually launches the application for you. you and this is where you can do a lot of your um, debugging and for writing your tests. So you can write in something like query all and get all of the elements on the page. So there's 31 on this page. So if we wanted to tap that OK button, we can find here is the ID. It's called button 1. We can either tap by text or button. We will tap by ID because that is better. So we can just do touch So what this is saying is touch is a command that Calabash gem has. The star is the class type and we're just going to use the wildcard because we really don't care what type of button it is. ID is the identifier and then in quotes the ID name. And hit enter. And there you go. You can see that it closed out that prompt. You can do the same thing by touching this accept button by using text instead. So we can do query. As you can see, we found the object. We can now touch it. Boom. And it touched it. We can touch again. Alright, and that basically finishes up this portion of the series. In the next video, we'll be looking at what the heck did we create with this feature file stuff when we did the Calabash Generate. What a feature file is will be our next video. And then in the next video, we'll be looking at what the heck a step file is. Thank you for watching.